Hi, I'm Daz, and today's victim on the bench is this KB Gavoet, I think it's what you call it, um, known as an RB10. It's a nice shade of blue, I think that's the only reason I bought it. It's a little tatty, um, there's a crack in the bottom of the case. The back cover looks like it's a little bit, uh, seen perhaps a bit of moisture. Um, I think this set is from about 1960. Um, I noticed the uh, on off markings are missing. Tuning scale marked in meters. Volume control, medium and long wave. Um, so I was just going to have a bit of an evaluation just to see if it's worth fixing. This one is a live chassis set. Um, no transformer and also it has an unusual way of dropping uh, the filaments uh, which we'll have a look at in a, a moment uh, well here we go looking inside what can we see well it looks like somebody's disconnected the metal oxide or, or selenium rectifier already and replaced it with silicon and a limiting resistor uh, yeah that's good isn't it um, it looks like Something's been going on here with these resistors as well. Oh right, I see. That must be the voltage change switch. I must admit this doesn't half look like an All-American 5, doesn't it? Except there's only four valves in it, but uh, that's the ferret rod. Now, this must have been damp. The other bad thing is, is that I've noticed there's a hole in a loudspeaker. And if you notice the shape of this loudspeaker, it's something that uh, you don't see very often. That shape, isn't it? Very, very narrow. Mind you, I guess something like that you might have seen in uh, modern televisions, because um, the modern televisions quite often seem to have the uh, uh, very narrow speakers like that, so there's always a hope. But there is a hole at this end, so that's not so good. So it looks like the chassis is held in by these two screws here. Obviously, being a live chassis, it's got to be on an insulated thing. You don't want screws sticking through. Um, tuning capacitor. Wax capacitors, yeah, well, we sort of knew that, didn't we? So that's the output transformer here. These resistors just sort of hanging in mid-air seems a bit strange to me. You'd thought they'd uh, been fixed down a little bit better than that. I'm just looking. Yeah, that's right, the peg, which is here. So how do you determine which one is the right tap? Oh, I guess having a look underneath here. Yeah, that doesn't go anywhere, so that is the 240 volt tap and that's the 210. Right, okay, so that's the inside of it. Let's get the chassis out. Let's check that speaker and a few other things. I think you've got unsold on the speaker, the looks of it. Well, here's the naked chassis, so we better make this an 18 rated video. <coughs> Switches at the front. Oh, these again. <laughs> Just had a run in with these before. Um, <clears throat> yes, it's a red version of it. Who are these made by? Clarosat, made in England. So, yeah, that's one of those again. Let's look underneath the chassis. Well, there's a waxy to start with. There's our um, X rectifier. Uh, some polystyrene's in here. Now I did see some date codes on the... Unless there's one on here. PC3112, no. No clues on that. Uh, there's a date on here, I think. 196. And I can't read the rest of it. Right. No. Oh, that's a shame. Maybe I'll be able to see the other one. No, I can't see a date stamp on that. Oh, well, at least we know it's 1960-something. So that's uh, good news. So, the mains comes in from there, or goes to there. Right, where is it? Oh, I see it's two-pole switch. So that is our across-the-line capacitor there. A good sensible start on something like this that looks like it's been damp is to 
check continuity on uh, round components. So I'll start with the speaker. That's, oh yeah, that looks good. Uh, the popular one to go wrong is the output transformer. So I'm just gonna try and trace these wires. It's got three winding, well, three connections on it, two windings, because it's got a humbucking sort of winding on it. Let's see if there's anything to that. Yeah, 22 ohms. Assuming this is the high impedance one. 376 so that's good that means that those windings are good um, let's just try the ferret rod if we can get a good connection yep there's something there yep 17 ohms because I go down a range I think and it can make an irritating bleeping noise. Yeah, that's good. So the basic wound components are good. Uh, if I really wanted to get ambitious, I could just see if there's something going on with the IF coils. Yeah. Yeah. No. Or am I testing it the right way? I think I am. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm not getting much from this one. Ah, oh, there we go. Wrong way round, silly boy. Right, okay, yep. So I've got continuity on all the wow components, so that's good. And what did I forget to test? I forgot to test the oscillator coil, didn't I? Yeah, I'm getting continuity on the oscillator coil, so that's good. I've just taken the uh, valves out, and I've just um, been just cleaning it up a little bit. It's very dusty. There's a hunts there, which is the uh, compensation capacitor, so that's going to have to come out, isn't it? Um, this is moving. So that one will have to come out. Now, I think... Oh, it's difficult to show this. I've got a feeling that's the coupling capacitor and I've got a feeling it's one of those tubular ones so that might be alright. Um, I've got a feeling a lot of these resistors and that are going to be out of tolerance. These ones of this age seem to have a little bit of a problem. I've got a feeling this bit here is possibly the tuning cap for offset. I, I'm for the offset of the... Uh, Either the oscillator or the. Uh, some look at the diagram. Yeah, it's the oscillator. Is there an aerial trimmer? No, there doesn't seem to be an aerial trimmer, so maybe. Oh, well, here's another one of my really bad drawings. So, in a conventional set, the filaments are normally connected across the AC line for a um, ballast resistor. <clears throat> and then the AC coming in is rectified by a rectifier valve. Now this is completely different. As you can see you've got the valve, some valves in the neutral and some valves in the live and they're connected in series with the HT supply. Now these set of valves add up to 50 volts so there isn't a lot of volt drop through there. Now of course you've got a a, um, a non thermonic rectifier, it's assumed some metal um, type uh, rectifier here but you've also got a resistor this is your ballast as such which is across the smoothed HT supply so it's just a small load of course the idea is, is when you switch on you've got to have some current flowing and if the valves are not warmed up you won't so this resistor provides a little bit of drain on the HT so these valves do start to heat up and of course once they heat up they start to draw HT current and then they come up to full power so I bet this set takes a long while to start up um, is my reckoning um, you've got the usual modulation hum capacitor there um, what else can I say really um, these are an unusual set of valves but I think they're the same valves that were used in my 
um, HMV clock radio. They look familiar, especially the 19 AQ5. Um, I noticed I've forgotten to label this one. That's 10 mega ohm. So the uh, looks like the uh, uh, preamp valve and the rec uh, sorry the preamp valve. Now that one's 470, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. The preamp valve looks like it must use grid leak because that's 10 meg and there's no cathode resistor there. Um, so that must use grid leak uh, grid leak biasing. Yeah, I don't know what else I can really say really, but this is actually talked about in the radio television uh, book. Um, and I think it's 6061. They mentioned this has been a solution to um, lower power consumption. Um, the other interesting thing is that notice the HT current's 40 milliamp here, um, but it says 150 milliamps RMS. Now that's got to be because the poor power factor of rectifying, half wave rectifying. So it's using that principle as well that uh, because the power factor's poor, you're going to get a large pulse current here. Uh, this all looks fine till this capacitor goes short here and blows every single valve up. Hmm. I can see that as a disadvantage. Um, these are 150 milliamp valves, by the way, so uh, a bit unusual. That's actually how the valves are connected. What they've done is they've moved the 19 AQ5 to the other side of the diode to try and reduce the voltage, um, I guess, between the filament and the cathode and they've moved the uh, other valve in so you've got three on the bottom line now um, which I think was uh, valve was it yeah V2 let me move V2 down there so alright let's uh, let's try this radio on the speaker okay the speaker's working well, I've done a little bit of minimum work because I want to try this out. I've got rid of the Hunts, which was the tone correction capacitor. Replace that. I've used a 1000 volt device. 630 would have probably done, but admittedly that is a position where the waveform is a bit on the spiky side. Uh, what else have we done? Um, I've put an X rated capacitor in on the mains. And uh, there's also the AGC capacitor replaced, but I've replaced nothing else. I've given the Valve holders are quick clean and the pins, so I'm nearly ready for power up. By the way, I've got rid of that silicon diode because those early ones are not terribly reliable. So put in a, <laughs> the usual culprit, one in 4007 in there. And I think I'll connect it up to the uh, dim bulb variac and isolation transformer and perhaps I might bring it up and see what happens. The volume control um, capacitor is a... Um, ceramic and there's a tubular here that goes to the uh, uh, first grid of the output valve that capacitor as they call it um, yeah this tubular one that's probably all right so I'm just going to leave that for the moment but uh, I just like to see if there's anything interesting going to happen um, 1960 set red and black um, the old colors that we used to have um, in the 60s so red is live and black is neutral. Always double check your work before switching on. I discovered to connect the diode back to front. I don't know how I did that, but I do now because when I trace the wiring, I found that the live actually goes through the rectifier before it hits the valve filament. So I don't know if someone's modified that or it's a no modification because I've noticed the information I've got that the um, V4 and it says the rectifier might have been transposed so on later sets so maybe that's why. Well I've got it just on 10% of the normal voltage and you can see HT's already appearing. I'm going to leave it like that for a little while just to let the capacitor reform. I'm currently on 180 volts and the power factor is 0.7 and I've got 70 milliamps flowing which isn't really enough to heat the filaments means 150 well not really do much with them anyway of course what's occurred to me with the circuit is if there is something wrong with the smoothing capacitor and the smoothing capacitor is low in capacitance we're not going to get the 
pulses of current on the filament side so we're never going to warm the filaments up uh, properly but uh, I'm up to a main voltage now of 213 volts and I've certainly got 80 milliamps flowing in the main side so I'm wondering if the capacitor's a little bit weak um, but I'll keep crawling it up hopefully eventually something might happen um, but uh, yeah I'm 240 now almost uh, starting to draw some current now and look at that HT fall ah there we go now something's now we're cooking with gas uh, yeah I've got about 100 milliamps now on the primary side so yeah I reckon this radio is exceedingly slow to start up with this arrangement the other thing I'm minded to do I must put a fuse in this I don't fancy using the uh, valves as a um, fuse, especially the output pentode, because they're not exactly cheap now. Um, so, yeah. Hmm. Oh, I can hear a hum. S scratchy uh, tuning condenser, the sounds of it. Oh, it's picking up a buzz. So uh, that's good. Let's try that the other way round. Oh, that was the mains. Try that. Oh, that's medium, that's long then, I assume. Anything? Uh. Oh! We have life! Oh dear. Ooh. Well, at least we've heard a station, so that makes me a little bit more confident about the situation with this radio. As usual, um, there's a few uh, resistors out of tolerance. I generally, if it's over 20%, I change it. I noticed they've bent the lead, so I've just been trying to straighten them so I can pull them out of, without damaging these tracks, because obviously they're delicate. Early circuit boards were really delicate, plus this has got baked from having valves in, so... Uh, Anyway, um, I tend to put new solder on, then desolder it. I tend to find the new solder helps to uh, make it easy to unsolder. Well, I'm gradually getting them there, changing a few resistors and capacitors. There is some ceramic in here. There's another one down here, so not changing that. All the polystyrene, not changing that. They should be okay. Um, just look at some of the resistors I changed. It's the usual culprits. These 10 megs tend to uh, go high and this is around 15. The cathode uh, bias resistor for the output tube valve, um, that gone down in value from 220 to 200 and I don't really want that because these, uh, these valves have a uh, tendency to overheat these uh, 19 um, AQ5s. I think I've got that right, haven't I? Yeah. 19 AQ5, they, they tend to overheat as it is. Well, I wonder if that's why they've got black on them. But uh, certainly don't want more more current going through that than um, is uh, set. So 200 is definitely not a good idea. 470 was about 600, this 10K was about 12, and the 220, which is used on the anode load of the preamp valve, that had gone up to around... Uh, 280 that's they, they always seem to drift these 220s i don't know why so that's what i've done so far the next thing i guess is to uh, get this can out and uh, i'm going to replace it with 33s i daren't change the capacitance on that to any great extent because it's obviously the power factor um, caused by charging it that's setting the current through the filaments so if you lumped a, a much larger capacitor and you might find yourself uh, overrunning the filament so I won't do that. Let's just test the waxy shall we? Or the waxy. 100k at 100 volts. Yep. That's a resistor. Try the hunts. There we go. See what that does. Oh not as leaky. 100 megs. That's not too bad. Mind you it's rated at 400. Let's give it a bit more voltage. 250. 
Yeah, creep towards 10 megs. They are getting more leaky, more and more leaky. I suppose the other interesting thing might be to test the diode. Um, right, let's do this for a bit of fun. Right, that must be the reverse direction. That's obviously forward direction. go let's put it back in reverse 250 yeah can it take 500 though because that's more like that's what it's going to be expecting to do that hasn't broke down no it's still functional so the diode is still pretty good there's still a bit more leakage than what you'd expect for a modern diode but uh, it's put up with 500 but then you've got to remember that during the half cycle you've got the voltage you've got a voltage opposite way round from the mains plus the voltage on the smoothing capacitor so it's going to be well over 500 volts so I just stick it on a thousand and destroy it yeah oh no it's still putting up with it well, this must be quite a high PIV diode right let's have a look at this capacitor 19 microfarads Ah, well, 19 microfarads twice. Well, either I'm, either I'm connecting to the wrong place, which I don't think I am. That's interesting, they're almost identical. Not quite. ESR's okay. But it'll explain why we're not getting enough current through the filament. New year. Every day and off, every draws players. That pot needs a clean, I think. Well, I've done the capacitors and resistors that I thought I needed to change. Um, the AC current is still only 110. Um, so the HT's gone down a bit, if I remember correctly to where we were. So that's better. Um, but it's still not drawing enough really to heat the filaments up. Um, so my next trick might have to be to try and measure the uh, HT current if I can. Um, I'm trying to think how to best approach that um, but it could well be that the um, output valve isn't drawn enough current so uh, that would mean there wouldn't be enough current in the primary um, but at least uh, it's uh, a little bit better than it was. I'm just going to have a look at the power factor uh, 0.76 so it's got a bit worse um, but as we can see the uh, cathode is sitting at 4.6 the cooled voltage is 6 on the diagram so well I've dropped the uh, center tap off the output transformer so I can measure the current now and I'm just looking at how much current we get through the filaments before it warms up it's 92 milliamps as it is so here comes the HT current well, I've given it a little while to warm up, and we've still only really got HT around 30 milliamps. But I just think it, I'll do something naughty. We're on 240 volts. I'll use what I've got left on the uh, Variac. It's about 255 volts now. Oh, yeah, and I can hear the volume going up as well. That's more like it. And yeah, it's, we're going a little bit better than a dull orange glow. I've been sitting here thinking about this inrush current limiter and how that affects the pulses etc. And it suddenly occurred to me that even though I uh, was measuring the voltage after the dim bulb, the dim bulb is still in. Of course that's going to limit the size of the pulses more. It's only, it's only going to be a small resistance but uh, I think you can see now the HT is up to more or less the correct level. My cathode current. Is six point uh, voltage <laughs> current cathode voltage now 6.5 and um, my HT is 187 so that isn't too far out now now they obviously the filament current is still a bit on the low side at 134 but it's a damn sight close to 115 we were so that's my silly mistake in forgetting that the um, dim bulb was still in and the reason I've got it in was to protect the valve filaments as I've got no fuse in and last thing I want to do is blow the valve filaments if I accidentally short something. Um, 
but uh, yes I can see the output valve the cathode is now a nice dull orange so maybe it isn't too far out but I'm going to look at this current limiting resistor anyway because it's on one tag and there's a lot of weight on that and uh, that's going to fall off before long so anyway well I'm just working on the underside just putting the new mains lead in put a fuse holder in hopefully that's going to be okay not catch anything um, I put it in actually before the main switch in this case just so it uh, gives some protection to that thing is neutral isn't ch true chassis on this because it's going through three filaments I've discovered but I'll come back to that later um, also where to route these away from the volume control and this sensitive area here um, which is where the preamp is so uh, making progress I've uh, had to put an extra bolt in there I didn't really like the way this uh, cable grip was working just under this one bolt because this bolt doesn't fit very well on this uh, um, which really appears to be a um, more like a tap screw so I don't know if that was an afterthought or someone else has added that but uh, anyway I'm making progress well I thought it would be interesting just to stick the scope on and have a look across the 10 ohm resistor so 10 volts equals an amp so we've got 4 volts peaks here um, so that's 400 milliamp peaks you can see there on every half cycle very very spiky waveform so the average of this somehow is about 150 milliamps um, I wouldn't even attempt to work that out mathematically completely beyond my math skill but uh, I thought it would just be interesting to have a look at uh, the voltage there. Now looking at the voltage between the chassis and the input to the filament of the output valve, the 19AQ5, and uh, that's interesting as well. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. That's just within what that's allowed for the cathode to filament voltage, which is 250. I've looked that up. Um, it makes me wonder uh, why they changed where the valves were arranged, whether they actually had cathode filament breakdown problems. Um, and that's why they've moved the um, um, filaments into different positions to what they were on the original circuit. But uh, yeah, it's certainly uh, pushing your luck on that uh, insulation. I'm just uh, setting up here to do the uh, trimming. Um, on this one, the IF is a little bit higher, if I remember rightly. Let's have a look at my notes. 470 kilohertz, so what I'm going to do is rustle the paper. Um, I'm just going to try and put it in over where the mixer is. Um, these are double-sided, so I shall just go through and just adjust for maximum level. I've got a load resistor in and a series resistor, so it's not quite so loud this time. Well, I thought I'd start trimming and then I've run into a little problem. Um, and that is that uh, after the set's been on for about a minute or so, the output just starts to drop and drop and drop. At the moment, I don't know if that's a, an issue with the amplifier or with the RF stage, but uh, certainly makes trimming uh, a little bit difficult when you've got a, a fading output. What I've discovered is as the audio is dropping, it certainly is um, reducing on the volume control. So it's not the audio stage, because the volume control is before the two audio stage, but the AGC voltage is going up from one and a half, minus one and a half to minus three, gradually by itself. So I'm wondering if that's something to do with it. Okay, I've drawn part of the RF section. Okay, so what we've got here here is the rectifier built into the triode, there's a diode, that's the final IF, so that is rectified, that's the anode, so what happens is we develop a negative voltage across the pot, that then comes off through this 2.2 mega ohm resistor to this capacitor, then it, it's fed back to the other anode, I'm not sure why, well it would stop it going positive, but I'm not sure why that's a problem, but uh, but it's also fed to the grid of the IF valve and VAR, the uh, loop aerial, to a grid on the um, mixer. 
So why is the voltage going high? Well, the only thing I can think of is I'm going back to when I worked on that uh, civilian receiver. I had the same problem. After it had been on for a while, the AGC would go, start going up by itself. And I never really got to the bottom of it, but I replaced both the mixer valve and the first IF valve, and the problem magically went away. Now, I don't, I'm not sure why you get grid emission. I guess it's something wrong with the valve. Is it a bad vacuum, or is it just wear and tear? It's also possible that the voltage is coming from this uh, anode on this uh, uh, triode diode, but I don't think that's likely. So I'm not quite sure where to go with this. Um, it would be nice if I could connect in and find out where the current is being pushed back into and then I can identify the fault but I doubt I've got any spare valves to replace these two to try it. Um, what I hadn't noticed before is it is actually happening with the real world. I put Caroline on and I gradually heard it fading away until it was uh, barely discernible so it's because the AGC is being pushed um, um, quite negative minus three it's cutting off these valves so well I've substituted the IF and RF mixer valve and uh, it isn't stopping the AGC moving but what I am noticing is the 1286 the uh, the anode voltage is dropping by about 20 volts and the grid voltage is dropping as well because it's um, one of those um, leak type uh, biasing arrangements so I, I'm not quite sure what's happening so anyway if this if this anode voltage changes a lot it's going to affect the way the diodes are working so I guess that's what's happening um, I don't think I've got a substitute 12 AT6 I'm gonna have to uh, find one well this is my scribble pad while I've been doing some tests it's been very interesting um, I did manage to find, I think it was a 12AV6, which is an equivalent, but uh, basically um, these figures here represent after 15 minutes of use, you can see the AGC is fine and the audio output more or less stays the same. Before I changed the 12B6, you can see the AGC is going upwards. And it's causing a dropping signal because it's turning the gain down so the audio is only dropping by half but the 1286 has definitely got some sort of problem it's not affecting the AGC but the audio dropped dramatically as it started to saturate so basically two problems the AGC has been pushed up by this 12B6 and I did have one of those and the 1286 seems to be saturating um, well I think I'm going to call this the radio that doesn't want to be fixed. Um, placement uh, diode triode has arrived. Ten and sixpence plus purchase tax. Right. But I uh, noticed that the mixer oscillator has white topped. Um, so Ooh, look, there's a crack in the glass. Ooh, right across the base. That's happened since I've left this sitting here for several days. Oh, I've got another one, but uh, that's really annoying. Hopefully, finally, I'll be able to do an IF setup now. <laughs> I just happen to be looking at the AGC as well as the audio as well. Just going to set the oscillator at 600 kilohertz now. It's a little bit out, so I'll just put it onto 500, and then give this oscillator coil a trim. It's a bit high, so I guess I need to go in.
Right, now I'm going to tweak the ferret rod at 600 kilohertz. Just see if there is a peak. Mm, not really, not much. Now at uh, 1.5 meg or 1500 kilohertz, I'm just going to set this oscillator trimmer if it'll move. See if I can find the tone. Not having a lot of luck. that way. Sometimes it's a bit better to rock the dial I guess. Now I'd normally adjust an aerial trimmer but I haven't got one. Um, the only way I guess you could adjust the trimming is to bend some of the veins of the capacitor. I don't really fancy doing and I must admit that uh, most of my sensitivity is needed at the lower part of the band but uh well it's getting radio Caroline so that's something anyway well here's the loudspeaker the missing bit is still there interesting um, looking at the speaker it's very brown but black here so this has been exposed to the sun so wherever this was located it's obviously in the sun I, I thought well this is a very unusual shaped speaker but when I think about it um, I think speakers like this were used in CRT sets um, especially when you had widescreen sets so I don't think that's a, an unusual size in a way in fact I've seen some online that might be suitable to fit. Of course the impedance will be wrong again which is a problem with the output transformer. <sighs> of course the case is very grubby. Um, it's also the mount is broken here I notice. Well, I'm going to attempt to repair this speaker. I um, don't really know what I'm doing <laughs> to be honest. It's like watching somebody else do it, but I've got some PVA copy deck stuff. Um, I've just been thinning it out a little bit, so I'm just going to... Oh my goodness, I think I've put far too much on. <laughs> Never mind. Attempt to put a bit of tissue over there as well. Oh dear. Let's get my tweezers. Hopefully not poke a hole in the speaker with them. So I've got two holes to repair. Right. I've never done this before, so no idea what I'm doing. And I've got this well wet, and I this well, that's my bit of tissue. I think that's quite enough copy decks. Right. Well, that's sort of join that up. I've just got to do the other side. Hmm. <laughs> Far too much. Right, I'll just put some around the other side I think as well. With the speaker. There we go. My stomach's rumbling. It's feeding. Well, I'm just having a look what I can do with the case. I super glued this broken bit and tried to super glue this in as well with a clamp, but it's not perfect. I think the next step is you strengthen it up on the side that's not being uh, visible, and perhaps the same with this with some epoxy. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this mounting bracket here that uh, holds the chassis in. I'm just looking for some inspiration to try and fix this uh, 
broken bracket. I've drilled some holes and put some little rods in. Obviously they don't poke out the front because it's a live chassis set and I'm just wondering if I can build something up on that grid to uh, replace the plastic. Well that's what the speaker looks like after I've um, put my little patches on. It's not fantastic. I think the cone's in quite bad condition. It's seen damp like the rest of the set has. Um, there's my little botch to hold in the uh, other end of the chassis, so uh, that's not so bad. Um, one thing I did have quite success with was the uh, the back. I've got it a lot flatter than it was, so it's a lot better. It's not so bad as it was. I must admit, after leaving it, it's started to warp a bit again, but you know, it's not too bad. It uh, sits quite well now, so. Uh, As ever with these volume controls, not being screened. Well, that was the KB RB10, an interesting little radio. Um, that gave me the run around with all the problems with the valves. It just shows that valves, you may think they're okay, but uh, after they've been on a while, all sorts of strange things can happen there. And it looked like perhaps they were running away for some reason, whether it was grid emission or they're gassy, I don't know. And the uh, last valve certainly was gassy, wasn't it? That was a bit strange, that suddenly um, splitting in the... Um, set to the glass broke. Um, very very strange indeed. Interesting design of radio using the filament as a ballast. Um, quite interesting trying to measure that. I'm still not convinced whether this new meter I've got is reading accurately or not. Um, I'm not sure if half wave is, is within its parameters and RMS meter. Of course at least you don't have to have this damn great thing in the set. set still uses 25 watts, so still quite a bit of power. Uh, I've had a few sets which actually use an auto transformer to drive the filaments and I personally think that's a, a better option. Things I do like about the set is the way the knobs are. At least they can't fall off and expose you to live mains being a uh, non-isolated chassis. So uh, that's a positive and I do like the uh, red uh, against the uh, blue so it is Quite a nice set. It's, it's quite. I think it's in a lot of use, and it's a bit bashed up. But uh, you know, never mind. So uh, anyway, getting back to uh, my signing off. Uh, hope you enjoyed watching the video, and uh, it was interesting. Uh, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.